they issued an ultimatum. If I wanted to continue working with mRNA, I would lose my prestigious faculty position and face a substantial pay cut. My salary was lower than the technician who worked next to me. But Drew was supportive and that's what I concentrated on, not the roadblocks I'd have to face. They told me that they'd had a meeting and concluded that I was not of faculty quality. When I told them I was leaving, they laughed at me and said, BioNTech doesn't even have a website. Yes, this is the story of this year's Nobel Prize winner in medicine or physiology, Dr. Kathleen Kariko. Dr. Kariko's story is very inspiring to people like me and countless others who absolutely love science. Her professional journey says a lot about hard work and persistence. The way she kept going and did not stop believing in her research ideas is very, very admirable. I think it takes a lot of courage. By the way, if you don't know this already, then Dr. Kathleen Carrico and her colleague Dr. Drew Weissman had won this year's Nobel Prize in Medicine because of their work on mRNA vaccines that had has saved uh, millions, if not billions of lives during the COVID-19 pandemic. Before I tell you a bit more about Dr. Kariko's story, please, please subscribe to my channel. A lot of work gets into making a single video. You have to brainstorm the ideas, you have to write the script, then you shoot the video, you edit the video and finally you publish it. So if you can subscribe to my channel, it is going to give me a lot of motivation and I will keep making the videos and I will keep bringing good stuff to you guys. Also, also, I'm available on Instagram as well. So if you want to follow me there, just follow me on Instagram. And if you want to stay tuned uh, for updates regarding university life, uh, study abroad, psychology, science, mental health, and much more, then follow me on Instagram and you can ask me any of the questions you want. Uh, so what are you waiting for? But why am I telling you the story of Dr. Carrico? Every Nobel laureate has got a st great story behind them, right? The reason I'm telling you the story is to familiarize you with another dark reality of scientific research and academic institutions. By the way, if you haven't seen my previous video on the famous academic fraud case showcasing a dark reality of academic frauds uh, in elite universities and also the pitfalls of academia in general, then make sure you check it out. Quick background story of Dr. Kariko. Dr. Kariko, who is originally from Hungary, is a Hungarian-American biochemist. She obtained her BSc and PhD degrees from Hungary only. In 1982, after completing her PhD, she started her postdoc position. But in 1985, she had to quit her position because she had lost funding to support her research. Yes, that happens in science all the time. You're not given money to do good stuff, to do science, to do research. And you just cannot help advance science and humanity as a whole. How unfortunate. Shortly after this, Dr. Kariko got an interesting offer from the US and so she decided to immigrate to US with her husband and two-year-old daughter. And Dr. Kariko then got an interesting offer from Johns Hopkins University in 1989, but due to some issues with a supervisor at a previous university, things didn't exactly work out for Dr. Kariko. By the way, her supervisor at a previous university blackmailed that they would get her deported. Then, fortunately, Dr. Carrico got an offer from University of Pennsylvania and there she started her work on mRNA. But again, unfortunately this time for Dr. Carrico, scientists didn't seem to be very interested on mRNA work anymore because there were certain hurdles in this research and there were no solutions to those hurdles yet. As I said in the beginning, Dr. Carrico was very persistent and she still kept going. She was conducting experiments in the lab, working on Christmas, working on New Year, yes. There's so much you have to sacrifice if you want to be a scientist and make a difference with your research. But despite Dr. Kariko's persistence, hard work and optimism, her supervisors felt it was impractical for her to pursue research in mRNA. And so she was given an ultimatum that if she continued with this, then she would be demoted and there would be a big cut in her salary. Just imagine how hard it must have been for her. Anyone with many years of research experience is supposed to be promoted. Uh, and not demoted as their research experience expands and I'm sure it must have felt like an insult. But a great scientist felt it was better to be demoted than to stop believing in her research. And that's exactly what led her to win a Nobel Prize in 2023. It was around this time that Dr. Carrico met Dr. True Weissman, with whom she shared the Nobel Prize this year. There's an interesting story behind how they met. 
You see, in those days, there was no concept of accessing scientific articles online, and if you wanted to read them, you would have to photocopy them directly from the journals. And to this, Dr. Drew Weissman said, "I found myself fighting over a photocopy machine in the department with the scientist called Kazalin Kariko. You see, this is how they met, and they started talking to each other and sharing each other's research. You see, this is a great example of how things are totally unexpected, you know, in your life." and you never know when something good might come your way so always be hopeful and persistent dr kariko was persistent and she had ideas to work on mrna but she did not have any money to do that fortunately dr drew weisman had funding he had money and so they both decided to collaborate and work with each other yes this is how scientific advancements take place science is always done in collaborations you work with different people because different people bring different perspectives to the table I think the stories of great scientists like Albert Einstein sometimes misses the point or like the part of collaborations and focuses as if science is one man's business. It is not. Eventually, their collaboration, their hard work, their persistence paid off, and they managed to solve the mRNA problem. This was groundbreaking research. As I said in the beginning, this work had been paramount in controlling the COVID-19 pandemic. I think everyone who is alive today owes so much to both of them and obviously countless others who worked behind the scenes. Despite such groundbreaking research, Dr. Kariko was denied a tenure in an elite academic institution and this is what she said to an interview to Wired. They told me that they had a meeting and concluded that I was not of faculty quality. When I told them I was leaving, they laughed at me and said, "PyoNTech doesn't even have a website." Yes, that happened. and as any sensible person would do in the situation dr kariko joined pyontech as a senior vice president honestly i feel bad and a bit of anger when i read about the professional journey of such a well respected scientist and such a great scientist who by the way do not get any respect by our flawed academic institutions why flawed because as a scientist as an academic if you are not constantly churning out papers in top journals doing groundbreaking research all the time and publishing interesting slash novel findings all the time then you are doomed and the example of dr kariko tells us a few things about what's wrong with our academic institutions and scientific research i think it's not practical or even possible for scientists to find novel results all the time yes groundbreaking research is how things happen things change at a bigger scale but such work demands more time more patience more persistence more money and more collaborations remember professor peter hicks who had won the nobel prize in physics in 2013 for discovering higgs boson but also remember that such kind of work wasn't done by single person it didn't happen overnight and also it required a lot of money science is going to be compromised in the name of commercial benefits then what happened to dr kariko is only inevitable i agree that sometimes some ideas never turn out to be true no matter how much time money or brain power you invest but this is what science is all about isn't it trying and trying and trying just one more time to know for sure that it is never going to work out and eventually you can move on to other ideas sadly that is not the reality and our academic institutions don't have that kind of patience and support for the scientist another interesting thing in dr kariko's story is the role of a private company in supporting her research and that company is bioentech founded by scientists and medical doctors in the year 2008 and a developer of one of the major vaccines against the covid-19 pandemic there's a prevailing academia versus industry debate that i encounter all the time honestly i can never understand why this debate even exist why is it about picking one side over another why do things need to be black or white why can't things be gray why can't it be academia and industry and not academia versus industry as i said earlier science is always done in collaborations don't you think if our academic institutions and industry both work with each other and not against each other then science would be making a much greater progress It is important to know that neither academia is perfect nor industry because their work cultures can be very different. And instead of criticizing someone for staying in academia despite so many shortcomings, or criticizing someone for switching from academia to industry is in my opinion very childish. If academia works out for someone, we should be supporting them. The same goes for those who want to work in an industry. Yes. 
it's true that certain challenges and issues exist both in academia and industry and we should definitely address those challenges but having this whole debate in order to make either academia look good or industry is just not worth it and in the case of dr kariko we should appreciate the support she received for her research for biotech because it eventually led to saving so so many lives against sorry during the covid-19 pandemic Okay guys that is all for today I really really hope that you enjoyed watching this video in case you have something interesting to say about this issue then please please do comment in the comment section down below don't forget to hit the like button and definitely subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss out on any of my latest videos i will see you in my next video until then take care and stay happy